You know what that means? I burned it all. this farm back in 2013 with the goal of being fairly self-sufficient if the economy were to take a crap coronavirus you can't say that covd19 <laughs> there you go um, covid 19 so back in 2013 there was a little bit of a recession back then as well and so it was kind of at that point that we decided maybe living in a housing development wasn't the best place. And Eric thought... Get back out to the country where my grew up as a kid. So we are going on our seventh year out here on the farm. And seven years later, we're back in a recession. So back when we started the farm, um, the goal was to stay out of debt. We didn't want a huge housing payment because that was the biggest fear was that you lose your job and you have a big mortgage how do you pay it now if you have savings saved up you can get by for a time but what if something more catastrophic were to happen so that was one reason why we moved out to the farm and that was one reason why um, we started from scratch we couldn't find anything at the time uh, this was all we could find but it was in our price range everything we got year one might have been really crappy equipment, but it got the job done. Yep. We were able to buy everything with cash. Um, the only mortgage we had year one was the barn and uh, the John Deere tractor. I think we did a home equity loan for the house. Or for, for the, the barn. barn. Yeah, we did a home equity loan for the barn. Um, so when we sold off the tractor, we actually got that fully paid off and then sold it. And then uh, the second payment we had was on the hay rake which even though it wasn't outrageously expensive, uh, it was a 0% interest loan, so it just kind of made sense for us to go ahead and get it without having to use up all of our cash on hand. So that payment that you saw entering the mailbox was? The last payment on the hay rake. Yeah. So now how much debt is on the farm right now? Zero debt. So zero debt, first generation farm, you can do it but you have to live frugally. What did we not do? Buy everything new. <laughs> we didn't buy everything new. We didn't build put, a huge house. We didn't build a house. We actually bought a used double wide because that was the cheapest way to go. Um, the other thing we didn't do is we didn't go on vacations. Um, we didn't really buy anything crazy. I mean, Eric's bought a couple toys, but he's had them for like a couple weeks and then flipped them for a higher price, which I don't know how he does that. He bought an RZR one year. Was that an RZR? Uh, Yamaha. Yamaha. Side by side. Y, Y, Z. Y, y R, Z. Something like that. Y, R, Z. Yeah, he, so we bought a Yamaha. It was a sweet looking side by side. He bought it on the cheap end. I drove it around here for a week and sold it two weeks after he bought it. I think he made like two or three grand on it. So. Yeah, most of the stuff that Eric's bought, he's actually managed to resell at a higher price. So, um, no toys per se. And yes, he did sell the Mustang. Yep. So, he is out of fast cars unless he decides to buy another one, build it, and drive it for another year and sell that one too. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> so, anyway, so those things... We have done to stay out of debt. We don't hardly go out to eat. I mean, all of our money for the most part has gone back into the farm. Um, and the tractor. Our New Holland, that's our house. Yeah. So we could have bought 
a good size of a house with the money for that tractor, but we chose instead to invest back into the farm rather than into a house. Because you can't eat a house. You can't eat a tractor either, but a tractor can make you money. We also bought that used, saving a lot of money. And you price shopped on everything that we've bought. We've bought well below blue book value on everything. So one of our goals moving out to the farm wasn't just to make money, but it was also to be somewhat self-sufficient. Now, a lot of you guys have commented like, oh, you know, you're never going to be able to grow your farm. You're never going to be able to do this. You're never going to be able to do that. Um, but we'd like to be flexible with what we do out here on the farm because we don't want to be in over our head in farming and on the back end not be able to provide for the family. So I know you guys complained last year that we were putting more money into maple syrup equipment than we'd ever see out of it. And actually, we broke even last year. So all of the money we put into our new maple syrup system, the solar system, the tubing, um, what else did we put out there? The holding tank. The holding tank. Solar and pump. Yeah, the pump system. All of that stuff, we broke even on our first year. We only had 100 trees. So that is a win in farming. If you can break even your first year. So now that brings us full circle to this year. What are we planning this year for the farm? Now our years go in cyclic, some years we do a lot, some years we do a little. So this year, we've got several different projects we're looking at. Go ahead and put your comments down below as I discuss them. What are your thoughts and uh, any suggestions? We're looking at possibly getting a sawmill. Um, two of the brands I've researched a little are Woodmiser and Norwood. Um, if you guys know any other good brands, um, put them in the comments. Um, we're open to all suggestions. Um, we have plenty of wood, so we won't be short on wood to cut. So a couple of ideas we had. Um, the reason Eric thought about doing a sawmill was one, because he's kind of excited to use one. And uh, two, the trees out back, like he said. But three, he also brought up a good point the other day that we could use those cut slabs from the trees to build a sugar shack or a Suzanne shed. So I know you guys were asking about this Suzanne shed and you know kind of going back and forth on that it will cost at least about another thousand dollars to finish off the inside we're kind of playing around with a couple ideas I did find her a nice oh. um, construction, construction office trailer trailer yeah but she wasn't sure if you could park that out here with the township yeah and actually a couple of you guys had mentioned that too to get a construction trailer construction office Portable office trailer. Yeah, I, think I don't it know what you like call it. Three two thousand dollars, twenty two hundred. Yeah, it was like two to three thousand. Yeah, and it was fully finished on the inside. It was a little. Yeah, it had a couple rough, rooms. but I mean, you put another grand into finishing it off, and that would definitely be cheaper. But the problem you run into with that is just township zoning ordinances. We have to look into that and see if that's possible. And obviously, right now it's a little tricky because that was in the township office. And of course, here's a trailer that still. Hasn't been finished. And uh, here's the inside. It's not too dirty. But, I mean, we do need to go through and finish off the inside. Sassy, what are you doing? So, this has to get done this year because I want to get it finished. Alright, so one of our goals this year is to really rejuvenate the hay fields. When we were at the farm show, um, we seed field aerators. And I remember watching a video, um, my buddy Scott, who passed away with North Texas Hay, he had talked about them too. I'll have to look online, but there's another company that is quite a bit cheaper and possibly a grapple. I think they're called Maxillator, a Cumo grapple. Um, we've kind of looked at getting one of those. Yeah, that would just save on a lot of man labor, I think, getting the Maxillator. Um, Cause you don't like having to load hay bales? No, I like doing hay bales. It gives you a nice workout, but you need, man, four to six people at least uh, for the operation we have. And it's hard to find kids nowadays that want to help out doing physical labor. With a max later, it's pretty much a one person operation. So one of the other things we had discussed looking into getting at some point is a second tractor or skid loader. Uh, so we're kind of weighing our options on that. The advantage of that, with hay season at least, is that um, if we had a second smaller tractor, we could run the hay rake, 
I wouldn't use as much fuel as the big T5. Um, it's nice to have a smaller tractor if you want to go in the woods too. Yeah, woods if you're going to be pulling logs out. Obviously working in the animal pens. And uh, if you had a second smaller tractor or um, a skid steer, we can use that to gather the hay bales while the other main tractor is baling. The second tractor or skid loader can be collecting and stacking them on a wagon. Yeah. I would really like a skid loader, but I think a smaller tractor is going to be a lot more versatile out here. Because with a skid loader, you don't get PTO or hydraulics oh, in the rear. Yeah, yeah. So. And you were looking at getting a, what, 50 horsepower? Yeah, around 50, 55. Um, at the show, I was really impressed with the Coyote tractors. Um, yeah. It's not your top three name brand, John Deere, New Holland, right. or Kubota, but they look like they build a really, really nice tractor. Yeah, they're very solid with a lot of features that were well thought out. Because their niche, niche is the smaller tractor market. Yeah, their lift capacity so. was much higher than everyone else's. One of the things that we are going to have to do this year, if, if, if we get the max later, um, is this. <laughs> so, what do you think this is? If you guessed a parade float, you are half correct. If you guessed a hay wagon, you are the other half correct. This was a hay wagon that somebody along the years turned into a parade float. And Eric bought at auction a couple years ago for, how much did you pay for this thing? 400? Yeah, it was like three or 400 bucks. Three to 400. Yeah, so. It had all the parade um, stuff was on it. I, we, I think I have a video of that. We ended up I'm tearing gonna, it off and just burned it. I'm gonna see if I can find a picture or some video of what it used to look like. Cause it was a disaster, like literally. This thing was leaving trash all over the yard for a whole year. You know, the main frame doesn't look too bad if you just put new deck boards on top. The so is this, off. is this the main frame right here? Part of it, yeah. Oh, this does but have this, plywood. I thought it was yeah. particle board. Because this still feels pretty solid. So this is what we've got to work with. Looks like that's wood too. And the tires were good. I'm not sure if they're still good. I think those are double layered 2x12s. Yeah? I bet you just putting a, a hardwood deck on here would be pretty good. So that might be another use for the uh, sawmill. You can use it to put a fresh layer on the top. So we have priced this out from other people and it is expensive if you put treated wood on it. I think I, 800 to a thousand I thought maybe. For I thought it was at least a thousand yeah. Rough sawn wood. Uh, well guys you might be in for a treat if Eric falls through. Again jump on it see how sturdy it is. I don't remember how long this was. Uh, I thought it I thought it was 20 foot. Twenty-five foot. Okay. Yeah. So if we got the maxillator, we would use this to obviously stack the groups of bales onto. Three. So you could roughly fit about two hundred bales on here. Two hundred bales. Which would double. That would be double what we could fit in the hay carts. Oh, the hay okay. Carts yeah. About hundred. Yeah, you're right. So. <clears throat> I would imagine you could stack four to five high. I don't know. 
at least four high. The new hollow would easily be able to go five high. Come on, guys! Come on, Mom! Good boy! Yes, it's good boy! Carl the dancing dog. Poor Ginger. Too chunky to jump up there. <laughs> like, My legs are too short. Ginger. Ginger. There is no way she can jump that high. Carl barely made it. I know it. You want to jump up and down right there? <laughs> There's a... Definitely. Alright, so one of the last things that we were looking at doing, besides getting a couple more cows, we do want to get a couple of cows. Um, we're looking at more of the grass fed varieties, maybe the short horn, built to Galloway. Um, what was another one we looked at? I really love Highland cows. Oh, love them. So cute. Eric's worried about the horn factor though. Because there was a guy out here in Michigan. They got gored by a bull. And it was a bull that was friendly. But it was getting a little too friendly with the guy. And he just went. It was the guy's dad. Yeah, it was his he was dad. He's taking care of the cows while they're on vacation. Yeah, well, I mean, that's part of it too. Is you have to be savvy and like smart about the horns and... You know, just like horses, you can't just go up and smack a horse on the butt and be like, yee -hee. Eric actually did that to one of the kids and the horse took off running <laughs> with the kid on the back. I think I anyway, like... I think I like the short horns. The short horns? Yeah. So we like stuff that's a little bit slower growing sort of beef because it gives a little bit more flavor. We had really good luck with our cows. The meat turned yeah. out just great. Fantastic. It was almost as good as Wagyu. Pretty close. Yeah, the marbling was really good. But the downside is uh, we're out of beef. <laughs> we ate through one cow in six months. Well, we have ground beef, but. Yep. Still, that's a lot of meat to go through. Anyway, um, so yeah, we want to get a couple cows. So if you have breed suggestions or if you're in Michigan and you've got a couple cows to sell, we want to get some, probably some bottle babies. We want ones that will finish out on grass too. We don't want right. corn fed cows. Right. Um, yeah, so we're looking at either getting a couple bottle babies or maybe a mom that already has a baby, um, and then getting another baby to go with that baby. I don't know. We want tame cows. Um, if there's a possibility of having meat in the freezer this fall, that's fine too. So a couple things we're looking into. Uh, the last animal product that we are looking at, we're actually going to use the hay fields for. And this is one, I don't know where we came up with this thought. Oh, because you didn't want to do chickens. That was it. So Eric didn't want to do uh, meat chickens, which I love doing meat chickens. But we came up with a compromise, which was turkeys. Guys, meat chickens, man, they will eat you out of house and home. Them suckers eat a lot of grain. Well, if you put them on pasture, they eat a lot less. But, uh, so we still might do some meat chickens. But anyway, for profit, we're thinking of putting turkeys on pasture because once we cut the first cutting of our hay the grass is short i think this area right here would be great if we fence this off here this leave this tall grass out here that is true because we don't do anything with this area we did plant the area back there with hay but it hasn't really taken off um one of the advantages of doing turkeys is that they dig at the ground so they help dig up any weeds um they also eat bugs and uh, we had a I think it was six turkeys a couple years ago and I had no issues with them. We let them free range and I'd call them back into their pen at night. Um, they pretty much stayed in the barn area, but man, they foraged really well and they were broad breasted bronze turkeys and those suckers would eat all day outside. The males dress out at 50 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Dressed bird, 50 pounds. That was nuts. We let them go. Dude. <laughs> way too big because we weren't quite sure what their weight was but yeah the females were 20 plus pounds and the males were 50 pounds so that's not live weight that's dressed that's weight. dead that's dead and gutted weight yeah um so 
We sold them at $2.50 a pound, so those were some expensive turkeys, let me tell you. But we sold out. So this year our goal would be to get maybe 100 turkeys and I'll put them on pasture with a pen so that they can roost and have electric fence around it to keep predators out. And uh, I think we'd probably need a electric netting or something. Yeah, maybe electric fence netting, electric fence netting. So we have a, we do have a lot of coyotes out here that would love to feast on some turkeys. Definitely have to keep them in at night. Yeah, so that would be one of the options. Um, if we had turkeys, we'd probably wait until after first cutting um, to put them out on pasture. And uh, we'd have a little turkey tractor that we could pull to different areas if we needed to. Fence them off, let them eat it down, fence off a new area, let them eat it. We'd probably only keep them for, what, 12 weeks? I think is what they said to dress them out at. Yeah, not very long. I know, so we're still working on the figures of that. But it would allow us to have a really decent income off a fast growing animal that we don't have to keep through winter. So that's our number one thing is we don't want to have to keep animals through winter. We've got the land, we've got the space. If we put the turkeys on the hay field, they're also going to fertilize it. So I think it would be a win-win. If you guys have experience with this, let me know. Yes, I do know you have to clip the wings on the turkeys because otherwise they can possibly fly. Oh, we'll have to, we have to get a hold of the processing company too and see if they would want to process the turkeys out. Um, there's a place, I think Holland, Michigan, that's yeah. a licensed process, bird processing facility. Yeah, we brought them our chickens before, but we'd want to make sure that they can process out 100 turkeys. Um, and I think they were $3 a bird for turkeys to process. Anyway, so those are a couple things that we're looking into for summertime projects. And yeah, I'm still working on the chicken cam. We're going to hopefully get that up and rolling. I want to try to get some drone footage for you guys too. Um, right now, the drone I want, you can't import it into the United States yet. Yeah, so Eric's actually the drone master. He's had a couple little toy drones and he does a great job flying them. The biggest issue is just they don't last. <laughs> what are you eating, Carl? Anyway, guys, so it's going to be a very very busy summer. So hopefully with this whole COV epidemic, I think a lot of people are more aware that they need to start prepping a little better. Yeah, and that's our goal out here. I don't wanna say that we're preppers, but it's kinda like keeping it in the back of your head and planning accordingly. So that's why we're not exponentially growing the farm. Try to be as self-sufficient as you can be. Right. Exactly. The more you depend on, on loans and banks, the harder it is to be self-sufficient. So don't forget to show your love by hitting the thumbs up on the videos. I really appreciate it. Share them with your friends. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. As always, take care, enjoy your week, and love you.